Salam, kids. Welcome to your channel, Islam Station. Today, we are talking about the conquest of Mecca. By the middle of the 8th Hijri year, the Muslims had subjugated the Jews by the fall of Kaibar and the Bedouins by sorties and expeditions in all directions. They had also secured the Quraysh with the Treaty of Hudaybiyah. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted the Muslims to have permanent ascendancy over Mecca and to retrieve the most sacred place, the Kaaba. You must have remembered that the Treaty of Hudaybiyah had been between two parties, Muslims from Medina and Quraysh from Mecca. Any other tribe may join either of the parties to enable peace. And notably, Banu Kuza and Banu Bakr, who were long adversaries to each other, had agreed to the treaty, while Banu Kuza joined a fight with the Muslims, and Banu Bakr joined a fight along with the Quraysh. The agreement between Muslims and Quraysh had stated that there would be no attack on either party for ten continuous years. But when Banu Bakr saw their strength muster with Quraysh, they sought revenge against their old traditional nemesis, the Banu Kuza'a. The Quraysh, instead of trying to protect their agreement, began to back Banu Bakr's evil intentions by mustering men and arms. Sons of Umayyah and Abu Jal launched a surprise nocturnal attack on Banu Kuza'a and killed 20 among 30 men. Part of Banu Kuza took refuge in the Kaaba, a sanctuary where the spilling of blood was prohibited. But shamelessly, the rule of sanctity was breached by the Quraysh, and some of the people who took asylum there were injured. This shattered the Treaty of Hudaybiyah. The delegation of Banu Kuza leaders went before Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, to report the attack, and he promised to help the tribe. Quraysh realized that by this action, they had made a grave mistake in breaking the treaty. They sent Abu Sufyan to renegotiate this treaty. An attempt was made to do so when he visited his daughter Ramla, also known as Ume Habiba, Razi Allah Tala Anhu, one of the wives of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. She refused to let him sit on her bed. She totally ignored him. Thereafter, Abu Sufyan came to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. He did not get any response from the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. He tried to converse with Abu Bakr, Umar, and Ali, Razi Allah Tala Anhu. They too ignored him. When he perceived his loss of influence, Ali, Razi Allah Tala Anhu, suggested that Abu Sufyan should go to the Prophet's mosque and say that he was upholding the peace treaty, whereas everybody knew that only the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, had the right to take a decision in this regard. Abu Sufyan, pride wounded, turned back to Mecca and his people mocked him. When he left Madinah, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, ordered the Muslims to get ready to fight against the Quraysh and to embark immediately. And so, on Ramadan 11, eight Hijri, accompanied by a great army, they set out. En route, more joined the ranks until they became 10,000. In the way, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, himself met Abbas, who emigrated to Medina with his family after embracing Islam. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, brought along Abbas and sent his family to a safer place. The Muslim army marched with all their speed, reached Mar Zahran, which is about eight miles away from Mecca, and started pitching their camp and preparing for attack. In order to make sure that full safety is provided and to show the strength, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, arranged the army into ten groups of a thousand each. They were ordered to establish separate camps and to light campfires. The whole operation was assigned to Umar, Razi Allah Tala Anhu. The people of Maka were unaware of anything when the Muslim army approached until, upon receiving news, they were filled with fear. Then Abu Sufyan proceeded to reconnoiter and was amazingly astonished when he perceived the enormous and huge number of the Muslim army. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, 
ordered him to go to Makkah to warn the Quraysh. Abbas went and met on the way Abu Sufyan, who asked the advice as to the safety of his people. Abbas took him on his donkey and went back to the camp of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Umar, Razi Allah Ta'ala Anhu, wanted to face Abu Sufyan, but Abbas led Abu Sufyan to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. For a second time, Umar, Razi Allah Ta'ala Anhu, eagerness to punish Abu Sufyan was overruled by the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, with an order to Abbas to give amnesty to Abu Sufyan. In his heart of hearts, he knew that Islam was the truth. The following morning, Abu Sufyan was brought before the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and eventually embraced Islam. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, announced that any person who entered the Kaaba or the house of Abu Sufyan or whoever closed his door would be safe. Abu Sufyan came back full of gratitude and was taken to a vantage point to see the great Muslim army marching towards Makkah. He hastily returned to tell people that the Muslims would not kill anyone who did not fight. Consequently, the people shut their doors awaiting the event. At the approach to Makkah, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, ordered Khalid ibn al-Walid, Razi Allah Ta'ala Anhu, and his men to enter from the lower side while Zubair, Razi Allah Ta'ala Anhu, and his forces should be entering from the upper side. He ordered Abu Ubeda and his men to advance through the valley to Makkah. Khalid and Zubair, Razi Allah Ta'ala Anhu, managed to establish their respective positions, and when the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, arrived, he had a brief rest and moved ahead with Abu Bakr, Razi Allah Ta'ala Anhu. Finally, Ramadan 17.8. Hijri, the moment so anxiously awaited by the Muslims, finally came. After 21 years of patience and trials, then Messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala went into the holiest mosque without any incident, bowing his head in gratitude. He entered the Kaaba, kissed the black stone, and made a circuit of the Kaaba seven times. There were 360 idols inside it, and he started knocking them down one by one as he passed them with his stick, uttering the verses of Quran. The fallen idols miraculously broke into pieces. He took the keys of the Kaaba from Uthman ibn Talha and ordered that every idol image inside the Kaaba should be removed. Then he entered the Kaaba with Usama and Bilal, Razi Allah Ta'ala Anhu, to offer two rakats to Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. When he finished the prayer, he gave Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, all the glory and praise while walking in the Kaaba. I hope you learned about the conquest of Mecca and its importance in Islamic history. If you enjoyed this video and want to watch more exciting stories about Islam, be sure to subscribe to our channel, Islam Station. Thanks for watching, kids, and salam alaikum.